We are live. Give a couple people a couple of minutes to get on here. I'm going to have a hard time answering some of your questions because I'm going to be over there, over in that area, destroying stuff. Um, the garage is rather messy right now, so I apologize. Uh, let's just give it a minute here. I'm going to have to take... I got oil settled in them filters, and um, I'm going to have to... Uh, Drain it out. Oh shit! Sorry. Um, let's see what we got here. Tools and toys everywhere. Uh, no tools and toys. Uh, okay. Get this. I'll try to jump back through and check comments here in a little bit. But uh, just give me a minute. Ooh, there's some stuff. In there. So, um, I'll get started telling you what this is all about. These are our uh, transmission filters. There's two of them here. This being, this is the older one. As you can tell, it's it's got some heavy residue on the outside. Um, and when I dump this out, there's going to be water in this one because I left this sitting next to the machine the other day and we got a big downpour. So I know there's water in it, so don't. Don't, uh, don't slam me for, you know, oh, Jesus, water in my garage. So, uh, but what it is, is there's a, a warning light on a 748 GT. That's the skitter I'm running. And this warning light started coming on the other day. It says oil filter pressure sensor, or oil filter pressure, not sensor. Uh, that comes into play in a minute. And it's telling me, that the pressure is too high at the oil filter. Okay, sometimes it used to do it when the machine was cold, when you first started it up, or something like that, which is understandable because your oil's more viscous because it's cold and it's harder to force through the microns of the filter. So, um, it, it would do that until it got warm a little bit. You know, you just let it warm up and you're fine. So that was understandable. But what happened, it started coming on all the time when I was under, when I had to throttle all the way to the floor, you know, the engine spooled all the way up. Uh, you're going to have your transmission pump going at max power, therefore it's going to be pushing its max amount. And it's creating the most pressure. Well, say it was getting over pressure. So, went through. I changed, I know it had nothing to do with it, but I changed the diff lock filter too. And uh, we changed this filter, which the Baldwin, <coughs> a Baldwin filter. It's the BT8397-MPG. These are hard to find, actually. Uh, they're easy to find, but hard to get over the counter. A lot of them they need ordered. Uh, the replacement for that filter is right here. This is the Napa Gold, um, or Wix. Um, that's, that's the Wix number on there. Um, the Napa Gold, the Wix number is 557602. And the uh, Napa Gold is the 7602. This is a direct, the bold one is a direct replacement for the John Deere. I can't remember the AT number. I think it's 147 something. I can't remember offhand right now. It's written down upstairs. The, um, and this one is a direct replacement for that. This filter is one day old. So what I did is, Changed the filters, ran the machine, came up with the problem. The light started coming on again after about eight hours of run time. Okay, so I started playing with the pressure sensor on top, thinking it was wrong. I'm hooking the wire, messing with it, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Narrowed it down, I thought, okay, the pressure sensor is bad. All right, and what I come up with there was I ordered a new pressure sensor. Sensor comes in, put it in today, same problem. Okay. Um, still got too much pressure. The light's still coming on. Now, I do not think that it's electronic because it's there's a pattern to it. It's when the machine's cold, it comes on in the morning, and then when it's under, you know, you have the motor under high RPMs when you're, you know, obviously you're, uh, you're full throttle. And um, I checked the main, there's a relief up in there on the top of the filler housing where this screws. And there's also a, um, in that pressure sensor, there's a spring 
uh, like a little plunger and things. I checked all that. Everything looks to be in good order. So, I went and bought another one of these filters, and these are pricey little turds. I looked everywhere to find a Donaldson because I was worried that I had a micron difference. And I talked to some people. I can't really find the microns on the Donaldson, but we found it. It's a 12 for the Napa Gold. And um, everybody I'm talking to says those should be damn near the same because it comes up in the book as a direct replacement. So I just wanted to make sure that some people say they didn't like the gold, they like the Donaldson. Some people say they didn't like either. They like the John Deere. And I had other people say great things about both. So, um, and everybody that's helped me with this, if any of you are watching, thank you so much. I appreciate all, all your help. I mean, because a lot of this stuff is, um, some of this stuff's foreign to me. So, you know, and I call for help, and people are willing to help. You know, that's not something you always get anymore. First of all, finding somebody with the knowledge, and second of all, having somebody with the knowledge, it's you're either able to get a hold of or they're willing to help. So thank you to anybody of those. Uh, change the filter, and I ran that skitter today for a while, and it's working fine again. I dumped this filter out on the job, and then I proved the container, of course. And I... I noticed some discoloration once I started getting the oil towards the bottom. There's no water, no milky discoloration like that. Um, it looks like almost like clutch sediment. You know, when your clutches start to wear, you're going to get that. And um, let's do this one first. I know this one has water. This filter was on there for a long time. Um, I don't know how long it got. It didn't have a, a label on it, but it hadn't been changed in a while. And I mean, it gets away from you because the skitter changes hands. I don't always have that machine. I'm going to dump that oil out. I mean, it's pretty dark. It's This is crummy. See, there's water in it and everything else. So don't go by what I dump out of this one. I just want to dump out what I can. So what I want to do is, I want to see what's in these filters in the way of residue. Like, you can see the oil, and that's at the very bottom. I mean, it's still transparent. It's a little cloudy, but it's not bad. It's hard for you guys to see from that far away. Um, we'll do one here a little bit closer. I'll, I'll come up to the camera and I'll zoom in. So, I mean, and I'm not getting excessive temperature. I'm not getting, uh, shit. I'm not, see if you guys can see this. I'm not getting anything that, you know, the machines acting exactly as it always has it's not shift there's no nothing shifting real hard it's not slipping it's not you know any of the the telltale signs and i'm going to pour this one out hopefully you guys can get a little see a little bit of color in this one maybe and that looks awful black not black but gray so it's making me wonder if I have excess residue or it's just got bad oil and needs changed, I mean, see, it's still pretty transparent. It's hard to see for you guys, I'd imagine, especially since I'm wearing blue jeans. Let's take this up. You look on there. Can you see that? I mean, you can see against the white. There's definitely residue. Okay. But I don't know how bad, you know. So... And I think how this works is, let me zoom back out. Oh, I gotta zoom back out. Hold on, I got big fingers here. So, I think how these work is your pressure, so your pump pumps your oil from your reservoir in the transmission. I believe it goes in the bigger side here. And it's pushed to the outer shell of the, the filter and it comes out these. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know Skitter Kev wants me to cut them open with torches. All right, so what I'm going to try to do first is poke a hole in this steel and cut it with a pair of uh, tin snips. Jason May check if you're watching, and I still got these babies. Um, and. If that doesn't work, we're going to go with the grinder route. I don't want to use the grinder because it's going to create residue, you know, the carbon from the, the carbon ember from the blade. I don't want to have to do that, but if I have to, we're going to do it. We're going to dissect these today. I thought this would be a cool live feed to do while everybody's at home. So let's cut this old turret apart first. I don't know how much more oil I can drain out of these. Getting some more. 
See, I mean, you can see that's the old filter. That one had been on there for a long time. Now the oil's still pretty transparent in there. So I don't think, I mean, I, you're going to get wear of clutches, but I don't think I'm getting, there's a little bit of sludge in there. I mean, no, not really. I can still see the bottom of the filter pretty good. So let me see if I can poke a hole in this dang thing with something. I don't, I don't know what I can even poke a hole in it with. Uh, maybe a chisel. I should have a cold chisel here. An old crappy spade bit. I did not get that one ready. And I apologize. Actually, I'm going to try this cat's paw right here. So, Alright, let's get this down on the ground. You guys don't want to see me anyways. Okay, yeah, you can see that. guys so I mean if I look like I'm, I'm just a dummy it's because I am a dummy not been solid there solid there no that's a heavy duty filler I'm not going to be able to do that all right so grinder route it is you go in there you go there I gotta grab some safety glasses there should be a pair laying right here when I sharpen chains, I'm going to grab a pair of safety glasses and earplugs. Give me one second, folks. Here they are. Where's the heckin' earplugs? So, let's plug this thing in. It's a noxious six inch grinder. I know this is probably not the way to do this, but I don't have any other option right now. So, I'm going to prop this up and we're going to cut it and see what we can come up with. Actually, it didn't get as much in there as I thought it was. I was cutting it so it was always pulling the metal from in and out, so most of the stuff was coming out. Um, there's some crud from my. No, that's actually. That's garbage. Okay, there's a spring in there. Yeah, you can see. Shit, I'm dripping everywhere. Hold on. Didn't think. You can see. There's definitely. There's definitely some. Some crap in there. There's the spring. Let's dump the spring out. You can see. Can you. Is it going to zoom? Can you see in there? That's the stuff from the grinder. Spring. 
I mean, honestly, there's some crap down there, but it's not, it's not what I expected for as old as a filter as this is. So, now, throw that in there. What I want to do is I want to, I want to hit the lottery and buy all new equipment's what I want to do. Well, what I want to do is, um, see if I can cut this through the utility knife and look into some of these, uh, look into some of the, the micron part of the filter here. Let me get my knife. It's over here in my tool belt. I hope you guys are finding this interesting. I just figured I'd do this because I know a lot of people are sitting at home right now. My last live feed wasn't that good. I don't think <laughs> I was uh, in a weird form and mood. Okay. this up and making it hard to cut. Actually, cutting though. Okay. So, I was wrong. Particulates are coming in on this side of the filter. I mean, that's Let's get the clean error. So now that we have, so here's I'm trying to do this so I can see what the heck we're looking at. All right. So your fluid's coming in here and it comes back out to the system here. I was wrong in my my other suspicions. And I could tell that because this screen is on the inside to keep the, the micron filter from collapsing. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull a flap of this filter and I kind of want to squeeze it and see what I get. I mean, it's against the blue, so it's hard to tell what color. It's way too dark. This is an older filter. So, but you could see by doing that, look, it turned almost white again. So it's not terrible, I don't think. Whoa, look at that. Hey, I guess you could use that for TP if you really needed to. It'd keep your ring good in the lube, too. Uh, all right. So there's that one. Now let's cut the newer one open. And my suspicion is, why, my question is, why did that new one plug so much? And I want to see if there's a difference between the two filters and if I had something, like, terribly wrong that it's, it's filling up. I talked to some people that said, you know, if your transmission's going, if it's that far along that it plugs a filter in eight hours, you'd be noticing it when you're driving the machine. I kind of thought the same thing, but I've been wrong many times. Now, uh, the other thing someone brought to light, and this is the guy that I work with, I subcontract for he said you know it's a it's a good possibility that he says you climbing a lot of steep hills on this job and the one skid I mean everything comes by the bottom it's a steep steep hill and uh, I mean not so steep that the skidder won't climb it it's but it's 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 not a it's not flat he said it's a possibility there's some crap that's been in that transmission over a long period of time 
that you are now have disturbed and it's drawing it up. So, and that's what's plugging. So, let's cut this one apart. steel is harder to cut through. Um, fresh paper towel. So let's, let's come over here and pull this apart with you guys watching. Oh, gotta get my bucket. Let's see, you can see the oil. It's got discoloration in it. But it's not, it's just cloudy. I mean, look at it on the end. It's not black. You can see it down in there too. So let's dump that out. Filter's got eight hours on it. Hi, David Haley. You see, there's not, I'm looking down in there, there isn't even sludge or anything in the bottom of this, which is a good thing. Um, there's no sludge in there, so let's wipe that off. Everything feels, I'll tell you what, it feels pretty much the same as the other one. I was surprised. I was expecting to see a quality difference because, um, <laughs> David who, because uh, the uh, Uh, price difference and things like that, you know what I mean? Donaldson's a pretty reputable reputable filter. Let's take this over and we'll cut this one apart. Oh, I know Kevin was hoping I was going to use like Tannerite or something to, to blow the filters apart. A couple people asked if I was going to use the 395. <laughs> uh, Stop it. Okay, let's cut a section. Okay, get your fingers out there. Remember, today's safety tip is don't ever stick your finger where you wouldn't put your pet. Yeah. seems thinner on this one. It definitely cut easier. So let's get a clean paper towel. Come back to you guys. So you can see this one. Let's straighten it out a little bit. Look, you can can almost see through it. Like it doesn't, I don't feel I mean there's dirt on it definitely. But I've seen way worse work fine. I mean, obviously it's going to stain quick because it's... I'm going to try to wipe a section of it off. 
I mean, you can see it. It comes. There's no metal in it. There's a little bit from when I was grinding it on the other side, but there's no, um, I don't know, man. I don't know what to make of the situation. There's the inside, so it's definitely not getting through the filter. Uh, Okay, so we hacked them apart. Give me a second. I will uh, wash my hands and we'll take this upstairs. Gotta wash my hands because we don't want that crow boner, you know? The crow boner virus. But, uh, we'll go upstairs and we'll chat a minute about this. Whoa, that's way too much Paraxo. I noticed Saw Surgeon said it seems as if that skitter has lived a rough life. And you are absolutely right, my friend. It has lived, it has lived a rough life. Um, a whole tree chipping crew had this before me. Then it went to another whole tree chipping crew for a short period of time, a year or two. And then now I have it. I run it. I try to take care of things the best I can. It's going to get dark. Um, but that's, you know, uh, sometimes it's not always, you don't always have that luxury, especially in this business. You do the best you can with what you have. Yes, you're right. So, and that was my thoughts too. I didn't think it would suck the sludge up. I figured if there was that much in it, um, uh, I need to get, sit down and just get focused here. Um, give me a short second. I'll go on the internet, interwebs, and I can read your comments a little easier that way. Hey, check it out. I got a black market haircut today. Actually, I got a few of them cut. Uh, that's a possibility. So here's my next thing. We're going to run this one for a little while. If it starts to act up again, I'm going to drain the whole damn system. Flush it completely. Put some new oil in it. And go from there. Um, I'm going to do that anyways. I just, if I flush it and do that, I'm going to do it sooner than later. You know, if it's coming up like this. Because something's telling me that oil's just got too much residue or it's too dirty. Old man in the wood. I saw you in the beginning. I'm sorry, buddy. How are you? Ah. Uh, so let's go to YouTube. Let's go to Nuts319's channel. See what that butthead's up to. Hey, oil filter dissection. I'm gonna turn the sound off. Okay, maybe I can see comments. All right. Mr. Yahoo, not this time. No, this was kind of a a necessity thing we needed to run and I understand yes the oil needs change when you change the filters it kind of defeats the purpose right yes um, we just things are really tight right now with this crap that's going on I really don't even want to talk about it because it's got me so irritated it's unbelievable and um, ALL firewood all the skitters doing is it's just throwing a pressure warning for the it's just basically saying there's a light that comes on that says um, Transmission oil filter, and it shows the pressure signal, which means I have too much pressure. So we thought maybe there'd be an obstruction in the line, but it's not because if it's not, if there's obstruction keeping it, the oil from passing through, it wouldn't even be drawing it. It's definitely flowing through the filters. Um, change the filters and started doing it again. So I changed the sensor in the top. That didn't do it, David. <laughs> David, that thought has crossed my mind. So the next thing is we're going to check the pressures. 
And if everything's good, something's wrong there. I don't think it's the wiring because there's a pattern to it. Okay? It does it when you're under full throttle. And it does it when it's cold first thing in the morning. Now, it's always did it when it was cold. Like, you'd start the machine up. You know, I'm going to hurry up and just take it over here, you know, to the fuel tank. And uh, throw the fuel in it. It can warm up while I'm doing that. Um, well, that light would come on, obviously. The oil's like maple syrup then, so... Fire Captain Tom's got an obsession with this hammer. He wants me to just hit everything with a bigger hammer. So, I'm trying to do what I can with what I got. It's, it's very tough right now. So, um, it's very, very tough right now. If I look like a hot mess all the time, it's because I am. I mean, I'm just, I'm crapping bricks and... Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, crap and bricks and shit and sticks, something like that. It's just tough. So, David, what did you say, or Tom, what did you say? We thought, Evangelou, we thought the hello hose might be collapsing, but all that stuff is pretty, they redid the transmission in this machine couple years a year before I think we got it is the park a brake affected when it does it no the parking brake is not affected the parking brake is run off of if I understand this right it's run off the diff pump so the diff pump there's a line that comes off the diffy pump that goes over to a block if you're sitting in the machine it's under your left ash cheek right underneath the corner of the uh, the cab there you take out little, there's a little galvanized plate you take off, you can look in there and see it. Well, that hose comes off that little pump, goes up to, which is mounted on the transmission, goes up to that block, and that block controls your diffy lock, and that block also controls your parking brake. And that filter is right up under your butt. It'd be like straight up under the cab, like where your butt crack is. Yes. You know... MSL, you say that, and all I can think about is, um, oh, man, I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it. I don't want to bring, I don't want to open that wound back up. It's like Chuck Stevenson used to say, if it ain't ants, it's roaches, dude. Videos by Al. Yes, I've seen that. They'll do an oil test. We're going to, you know, this was all kind of just happened in the past day, day and a half. Uh. I gotta scroll down. Steve Ray, there's an electronic box behind your dashboard. Just put one. It could be malfunctioning. David Haley, the filter was, it came on with the old filter. I put that new filter on, light went away. Ran the skitter all day. Ran it hard all day, though. I mean, I pulled a lot of wood in that day. I mean, hard for my normal running. And um, at the end of the day, that light started coming on again. Wayne Tharp, I just got a message from you that your wildcat killed a mink. I heard, I seen that. Steve sent it to me. Uh, fire Captain Tom. Okay, buddy. I'll be looking out for it. Um, and it's doing it. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself because I know people are coming and going. It's doing it when... You're running a machine and say, I got a drag. It's not a hammer. That'd be expensive shipping. Um, say you, you don't even have to have a drag, but you're, you're just, say you're motoring back to your drags. And um, don't talk like that, MSO. And you have, you know, full throttle. The light will come on. You back off that throttle a little bit. Light goes out. Pressure goes down, obviously. And that's whether you have a drag behind the machine or when it's no drag. So my thoughts are that pump is spooled when the, the motor is at full RPMs, the pump is spooled up to full RPMs, and it's pushing oil at the highest pressure then. There's only one left. Ah, uh, you guys. And MSL, I don't think the transmission burned up either. Because it, it's not stinking, it's not, um, it, it's not slipping at all, it's not shifting funny, it's not, 
you know, you know, when your clutches are starting to go, it'll take that extra, you know, it'll lag into gear, you know, it'll click, and it'll go, you know what I mean? This, I mean, you pop it into gear, and it's, I mean, it's just there every time, just like it always is. I don't know about, the, it's, I don't know. All I can say is the transmission shot, it's a death sentence, an absolute death sentence for all of us because it's torque temp gauge. See, that's the funny thing, Saw Surgeon. There's no oil temperature sensors going off. Nothing's getting over hot. I felt the filter. It's warm. It's, I mean, it's when it's a random machine all day, it was hot, but it wasn't like when you have a real bad bypass problem or something like that, it's hot, hot. Like, burn you. I could hold that filter. ALO, I have quite a few times. I feel bad bothering him. I really do. I bothered him too much about this. Um, and that's why I was saying thank you so much in the beginning. I didn't know if he was going to jump in when he seen this or not. It did, Mike, it looked dark, but at the same time, it's, it's still transparent. Now, I expect that oil to get a little dark over time because you're using the clutch, obviously. At least I do. I don't just slam it into gear. It's you're going to get wear on the clutches as designed to do that. All right, I will, Mr. Ar Is it Arbuckle? Yes. That box reads the sensors. Okay. Wade's a professional. He don't mind. Okay. So, um, I don't have gauges. I have to get a gauge. There's so many things I don't have that I need. And uh, I think I feel like that's just the story of a logger's life. I'm learning as I go on a lot of these things. So, no, Jeff, it's not in the transmission. No, it's it's pressure. It's saying it's at the filter. It's a 748G2. Why is this not update? Okay, that was Carson S. asked. asked. I am in Western Pennsylvania. I had to think about that. Bad sensor. Okay. I'm like David. Unplug the light. You know, I've, I thought about it. You know, and if it's just something that's not, it's, you know, it's, it's I, I want to say crying wolf. What's up, Nate? If it's just crying wolf, that's fine, I'll do that, but I want to go through all the proper channels to make sure that's... I want to make sure that's the issue before I go and do something like that. You know what I mean? There, that does happen, but you know, you don't want to just default. And there's other people, why just run it till it blows up and you'll know what's wrong? I can't do that. Halo Fire and C. Smith's a good dude. He's fixed a lot of broken crap from him. I bought my pump from where he works. I've taken numerous hoses to him. That dude's a good egg. He's a smart, smart guy. It wasn't until, like, sometime after I bought my hydraulic pump that I realized who he was. Like, one of his videos came across, and I saw him in something. I saw his picture in, like, a thumbnail. I was like, I know that guy. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. Yes. Yep. You're absolutely right, Saw Surgeon. So is MLH. I just, I got to get a damn pair of gauges and I don't. Money. Nate, trying to. I won't be. I'll load a truck tomorrow. I have three more loads to send out. This rain's going to screw me. So if you need hand cutting services, call me. We are going to, Mike. We are going to. As soon as I get to the point where it's not raining every damn day, I'm going to pull that thing in a spot, drain it out real good, flush it, put new oil in it. You know, just kind of start from scratch kind of deal. You know what I mean, burn? Burn, 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 burn. So, I'm glad you guys 
come across and check that out. I didn't know whether to make just a video. Atta boy. Yeah, I'm guessing you got a bunch cut down. Huh. <laughs> I gotta find me the one. See, I was looking at certain gauges, hydraulic gauges, and they wanted a shit ton for them. Change oil, put high guard in it. Okay. Uh, right on, Darwin. I gotta get, I gotta look up and ask him what the, what the, uh, uh, what's that word? Volume is for that, how much it takes. I think it takes about 10 gallons or 12 gallons. Mark Stalinsky's never turning down a nut slide. All right, how long have we even been on here? Whoa, 40 minutes already. So, all right, I'm sure people got things to do, kiddos to put to bed. Um, I'll let you all go so you can wash your hands and, you know, go watch the news and be afraid for your life. Don't watch the news. There's nothing good on the news. So. Yeah. I, I'll try to do MLH. Woo. David, I can't even get you to leave Minnesota. That's the last thing you got to worry about. <laughs> Fire Captain Tom says, no kids, keep yapping. Real McCoy says, it's a John Deere. <laughs> I'm catching a lot of flack tonight. Uh, it's all right. When you guys are poking fun, that means I know you care. Josh, I mean, I, 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 I got off of Facebook. I, got, I mean, every once in a while, I jump on there and look at stuff that I can't afford. Um, I, I don't watch the news. I just try to, I, uh, okay. Thank you, Eric. Van Lu, good luck when you figure out this. No. So, yeah, that's what I'm out. I think I'm out of things to say. I got some dishes to do. Uh, Tom, how was your donut? I'm supposed to ask you how your donut was. Oh, hi. It sounds like what I'm doing now. Straight up and down. Just parts of it are not straight up and down, but where all the good timber is, it is. They're not big hills, but they're steep bastards. Oh, Stevie Ray, there's no new transmission coming. I can tell you that. Like I said, if the transmission goes bad, it's a death sentence. I can't find a skidder, let alone afford one, you know. Fire Captain Tom's going to email me the video. I got to send you my phone number. Hey, get, you should, Fire Captain Tom, before I forget, because your phone number's still in my email. If you want, just get it off of David Haley or somebody that has it. Do you have my permission? Um, who else got it? A lot of people have it. Why can't I think of them? Real McCoy has it. MSL got it. Skitter Kev got it. See, Real McCoy, there was some people were having. The latest stuff we were in was an STP brand transmission fluid. I just got one. I got one just for y'all. It needs a pump. Are you talking about that? Look, you turd. Okay, I don't know what happened there. We had a message again. Yeah, I was told that too, Rodney Cly. Told that too. We had 70. I don't know what the peak concurrence was in this. I think I said 78, old man in the woods said. Michael Justice, how are you? 648D, see, hey, see, Smith's been on here. You have to go back and watch me cut apart the filters, buddy. 
I don't know what the hell the problem is. It just, the machine's old. It's all there is to it. It's just freaking old. 748G2, road hard, put away wet. And it's going to need a center section soon. I mean, it just, you know how it is. You're grasping for straws when all you got's toothpicks. David Golden, what's up? Yeah, we're just getting ready to wrap it up. We can let it go for another five minutes or so. Um, I'm going to be doing a video here shortly of uh, a shout out to a certain group, um, a supplier of goods that I buy. You all need to check him out if you're ever in a need for logging stuff. Wayne, I have your phone number, man. I won't show that comment so you don't have all these, uh, so the paparazzi don't call you all up. I got your number. If not, I'll get off Steve. Borrowed hard, put away, sell them. More like never put away. And that trench should only see high guard oil. Yeah, I'm sure, and I can about guarantee you it has not its whole life. Just, you know how it goes, man. People just, just, uh, you know how things go. So, holy comments. I'm just looking at some of the earlier ones. <laughs> uh... Saw Surgeon said something about at least I'm running a guard on the grinder. You want to see something funny? Back in my carpenter day, my bridge building days, you'd be cutting anchor bolts and these plates to fit down into parapets. So you'd have to notch around a rebar because you were not allowed to cut the rebar. And I don't know how well you guys can see. Let me, let me see if you guys can see this. Hold on. Uh, where is it? So you'd always be holding with this hand and cutting with this hand with the grinder. Well, some bitch would bite. And there's one right there. 867. I didn't even look. Oh, yeah. I see it now. Good one, Wayne. I'm calling you anyways now just for that. But right there, that was a cut from a grinder. And right there, that one went down to the tendon. The funny thing is, they don't bleed. Cut them with a grinder, you just caught her eyes shut, and you get a neat window into the inside of your body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming. They're gonna ruin the last good chainsaw. If someone, if there's a certain person that owns me a lot of, a certain company that owns me a lot of money, not a certain person. If they pay me, I'm gonna buy me a couple 372s here, but. Doesn't look like that money's gonna be coming, so I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. I gotta figure something out. I don't like the new shit. I don't care what people say. I just don't like it. I know at some point in time I'll probably have to be forced into using it, but it just, I don't like computers in my saw. I'm sorry. Okay, saw surgeon. That's a scratch now, son. Try it with a broken disc. No caught. Oh, God dang. Lesser man would have died. Uh, Nathaniel Lee. I run a Barco 225 for a loader. A CTR 42 for slasher. A Case 850K LGP Series 2. Um... And a 748G2 log scare. Used to run a 518, motor blew up, got the grapple. Now I'm running the grapple. Still working on getting the motor rebuilt. I thought about it. My friend has one, but he hardly ever uses it. Oh. All right, we're at 76. I got a basket of oranges over there I think I'm just going to go destroy so I can crap through a screen door tomorrow. Mark my territory in the woods. I didn't buy no um, junk food to eat tonight. I've been eating too much of it, so.
Tonight was pork chops, steamed green beans, and brown rice. Ah, oh, Michael, don't even talk about that. Ah, uh, what do you want to see, Nathaniel? What do you want to... What do you want to see? David, I have a question for you. David Haley, do any of the mills up your way produce toilet paper or paper towels or like the the um, any of the materials in the medical industry, anything like that? Because I know the ones down here, there's a few that make like the fluff for the masks. Um, there's a couple other products that they make. There's, you know, they make paper towel things like this and all that. I just... Uh, Dang, okay, no. I was just curious. They say a lot of that style of pulp needs to be hardwood because it gets fluffier or something, but it has and it holds up structurally better. I don't know if there's any truth to that or not. I was just curious. Magazine paper and copy paper, okay. I know you've told me that before, and I, I just didn't know if there was something else I missed. Ooh. I did too, Nate, but that's not necessarily the case. Charming. Uh... The case... GP. I'll try to get you a video next time. Maybe I'll do it when I'm, I'm dozing or something. It's a great machine. Um, I don't have any complaints. So it's going to need an undercarriage soon. Just like everything else I run. Something very expensive needs fixed. Anybody's got an undercarriage for it, let me know. My wife works for LL Bean Manufacturing. They're thinking about retooling for make masks. No shit. Wayne Tharp, you're absolutely right. If y'all haven't gone over to check out David Haley's channel, the little history of his family and the logging camp and stuff, that was great. And David, I don't know where you got that old time footage. I don't know if that's footage that your dad actually took back in the day or if that was just something that you had from like a local thing or, you know, something you looked up. That stuff is cool. I mean, that's... That's cool. Definitely hardwood and Scott gas station TP. <laughs> Never been there. Uh, yeah, David talked to me. He, he really knocked it off the chart with that one, man. That's that's. I really dig things like that. Not only was it about the history of the, the you know, timber in his area, but the history of his family and his, like, you know, how was where his dad grew up and all that stuff that's in the ccc camps we had those around here well not here but north of here in brockway and those areas and that was a big time in that area you know they were trying to get america out and working again after the war and stuff uh, firehouse tp before i left you know as all this went down as I sat on my porcelain throne in there one day, I said, hmm, I wonder how much toilet paper I really got left. I walked through the cupboard and all I found was an empty plastic bag of Scott. So I'm actually one of the people that's getting low. Now granted, a roll of Scott bathroom TP will last a single guy about three months, four months. I'm at a half roll, so I should be safe as long as no women move in and since women have been social socially distancing themselves from me for well my whole life i think i'm okay wayne tharp we'll we'll see you someone wayne tharp out of here i don't know nate i mean obviously it is um Get a hold of me after the video. I think my man saw a surgeon's out of here if I'm reading this right. So you take care, buddy. Thank you for stopping in.
That's all right. I'll do the doggy thing where you drag your ass across the carpet, but I won't do it on the carpet. I'll do it out in the yard or something. Oh. I had a friend stay here for a while. I have an extra bedroom and she was um, finishing some school and she just needed a place to stay for about a month. And I used to bust her. I said, what? You know, because I'd noticed consumption going highly through the roof. I said, what are you doing with all this? I said, are you like building figurines? Are you doing like, um, is that origami or whatever the hell or something? She used to get so mad. David Haley brought me to your channel. Damn glad he did. <laughs> Tell you what, Richard Lincoln, David is about the nicest guy you could ever meet, even if you ever don't meet him. I don't know how to put that in a better way, but I hope someday our paths cross. I can shake his hand. Because he, he's offered me some good advice. He's pointed me directions on some things. You know, just some of it's just random things. And just watching some of his videos, you know. When I watch a video some from some people, I mean, it's not all the videos I watch, but when, you, when I watch some, I'm not just taking the entertainment factor out of it. There's a lot of things you don't, you know, I personally, and maybe I learned something small just by watching, or I'll absorb something that someone says, or the way they carry themselves. I mean, it, I don't think people, I myself being one of them, realize what influence some of our videos have on people. So, um... I know it came a little more to light to me when I was at Bunyan last year, and there's some people came up to me and said, hey, man, you don't realize what your videos do. Uh, you, you, you just really have no idea. And he's, oh, yeah, you know, okay. And you stop and you think about it. And you know, some of these people were like, you know, you, I was in an ugly place, you know, and I just look forward to always watching you and seeing what you guys were up to. And, and that meant a lot. So if you're one of them people and you're watching now that came up to me at Bunyan and said that, they'll don't think that it fell on deaf ears. Uh, <laughs> fire cap, Tom, you're rough, buddy. Wow. Uh, man. David Haley owes me an Airstream and some skitter seat time. I still think two things are going to happen this one day. Old school Logan is going to speak in one of his videos and blow all our minds. And David Haley's going to do a live feed. And I think I'm going to have a coronary and just fall out of the couch or chair or wherever I see when the notification comes across. Those are the two things that my, my firm believer is that it's going to happen one day. It might take a long time. I tried to peer pressure David into a live stream. He won't go for it. <laughs> Uh, Jason Majek says I'm his hero. <laughs> that wasn't what you were saying when I was working for you. They called me short span because I would, uh, I'd get so bored with what the hell I was doing. I was cut, man. So I'd cut like two or three things and the guy would be up there nailing them while I wandered off. I was watching them dig holes. I was watching them do this. I was talking to somebody and I'd get yelled at and hollered at. I'd, I was just, unless you kept me occupied all the time. I was always off into something I shouldn't have been. <laughs> uh, Mike McCoy, wow. I learned to flow in filters tonight. So did I, Josh Wallner. I thought I had it, and I thought wrong. Oh, I actually love kids. So long as they aren't mine. <laughs> Shut up, Jay. Uh, I'm going to come deliver these shirts. You know, if I get rained out one day, which it's probably going to be every day until like Sunday, I'm going to come out and bring the, I'm going to, I'm going to personally hand deliver the, the, the shirt that you won like way back when that you still ain't picked up. And we're going to make a video. We'll take the side by side for a ride. And we're going to make a video or something. Now that you, you got all your stuff running. Nieces and nephews are great. We'll get... I'll bring... I'll bring the Wood Hicks book out. And we'll have... 
um, the girls do two intros. So Ali and Ava, if you're watching, you're going to be part of a video. So you better brush up on your introduction skills. set my alarm already uh, but all right fire captain are you like oh, this is all right everybody I'm gonna go and destroy some oranges maybe drink some tea and uh, plot my takeover of the world one tree at a time Dave Haley's caught up on donuts. Fire Captain Tom loves donuts. Well, Fire Captain Tom, if you ever come around this way, we'll take you to some... I'll take you. If you're ever down this way, I will take you to Orms Donuts in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. They make a cinnamon roll. It's called a manhole cover. You eat a whole one, it'll take a year off your life, but it's worth it. But all right, everybody. That's not a bad quote. Don't be sorry. There's no bad quotes in here, except if you ever say, like, give up or something like that. Videos by Al. We'll see you. You guys take care. Um, you've been awesome. Dark Horse Fire. Dang. Sorry, buddy. I'm just getting off. You guys were great. I appreciate all the support. Uh, I'm going to try my best and just keep making videos. I got a bunch of videos still I can keep loading. So if the planet ends, I'll just set them all to load up while we're all letting, you know, dead and gone and they'll keep playing so we can watch from wherever we end up y'all take care stay safe don't let your meat love